Good morning, beautiful people. Happy Monday. It is the first day back after my school's uh, spring vacation. A vacation I desperately needed because I was sick for pretty much 80% of the vacation. Seriously, like the first weekend, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, totally, whoops, totally sucked for me. I was sick as a dog. It rained every day, all day, gray skies, gloomy as could be. Luckily though, by Friday, I started feeling a little better and the sun came out Friday. It was glorious. It was the first time we had seen the sun and I can't even tell you. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday it was beautiful. Sunday I was actually feeling so good. I recorded two videos. I only uploaded one of them, but I did record two. I am back to vlogging today. I feel pretty good. So yay, I'm back. Um, this week is kind of crazy. Actually, the last few weeks have been crazy. Part of it is because we have these field trips every week for the DIA. This is our fourth and final week for the DIA, which I am actually grateful for because it's a, as much as I love the DIA and I love going to the DIA, it is it's you know it's a ton of time out of the classroom. Because we're there so long, they give our class the last lunch period on those days. And then what happens is we come back, we go straight to lunch, to the last lunch. By the time we get back from lunch, I have about 20 minutes before my class goes to specials. Then my class comes back from specials 40 minutes later, and then I have about 30 minutes before we just go home for the day. So honestly, on those Tuesdays at the DIA, I get next to no teaching done. I mean. I just, I don't. It's, it's driving me crazy. So I'm actually relieved tomorrow's our last day going to the DIA because I need to get back on track. Also this week, Wednesday, I'm, I have another writing curriculum meeting. And so that, or is that Thursday? That might be Thursday, I'm not sure. But it, that takes up an entire AM session. So that means a sub is in the room. Subs can't really do what I do in the room. So that's frustrating. So I have today to teach and then like Wednesday afternoon and then Thursday. Friday is Good Friday. Our school is closed for Good Friday. We do have school next week though. We have all five days next week. So yeah, it's just crazy. I'm really looking forward to things kind of settling down in here so that we can kind of get back to a routine because between my February and March were just really crazy between AJ's emergencies that caused me to miss days of work um, between my emergencies in the month of March where I was missing work and then all these field trips all of this in-service training uh, the fri the last Friday before the spring vacation, the fourth grade teachers, we had to go to a hope science training. It's just like, I need for people to leave me. I need my health to be good. I need AJ's health to be good. I need trainings to like stop for a while. I need field trips to stop for a while because honestly, I just need some time to teach. And if you're a teacher, you know what I'm talking about. There's all these constant interruptions that just really get in the way of good old-fashioned teaching. Sometimes interruptions are nice. Sometimes interruptions are really just a pain in the ass. <laughs> okay, sorry to cuss this early in the morning, but you know, it is what it is. So it is currently 6.30. I got here super duper insanely early because like I said, I wasn't here Friday. Uh, there was a sub in the room because I was at a training. So I kind of need to tidy up my desk get things laid out, although I was incredibly productive yesterday. I was feeling really, really good, which was good because I hadn't really cleaned the house in a week. I just, it's like, oh, to heck with that. So yesterday I cleaned, I cooked, I did lots of laundry, I entered grades into the online grade book because we have report cards. Report cards go home, not this week, but next week. Um, 
and then my kids need to do M-step practicing this week. So we have like a website we're supposed to go on where they can start practicing not how to take the test, but really how to use the tools in the test. You know, how do you pull down a electronic stick it note onto your screen? How do you swipe? How do you place the data in the boxes where it needs to go? Because um, even though my kids have laptops in here and they have a lot of experience on the laptops, it's a very different format. So we're going to spend a lot of time doing that this week in here, um, just practicing how to use the M-Step design application. And yeah, busy, busy, busy. So with that though, I'm going to let you go for now. I'll talk to you again real soon. I have to share with you a new toy I got. It's not really a toy, as, as I would tell the children. They are tools, but I got a new bucket of tools. So I ordered this off Amazon Prime. This was $72.00. But I had a gift card from a family member for $50, so I really only paid like $22 for this. But it is fraction circles, plastic, hard plastic fraction circles that make me so happy because, all right, can't open this way. All right. Um, I hated the paper fraction circles that came in the back of the book. Every year the kids had to tear them out, every year the kids had to cut them into pieces, every year the kids would butcher the darn thing so that they never really measured up right in the first place. The pieces would get lost, they would lose their envelopes, it was an endless hassle and it drove me to the brink of insanity. Every stinking year I would just be like, Gah! I hate fraction circles. So. Um, I was like, there's got to be a better solution to these paper fraction circles. So I went to my faithful Amazon Prime. God, I love Am How did we ever survive before Amazon Prime? Seriously, people, how? How did we do it? But I found this tub of fraction circles by, here, I'll show you the label. Um, fraction circles, classroom basics kit, ETA hand to mind. So this is what the company, and lo and behold, the circles are the exact same colors as the ones in the math series. So red is a whole circle, pink was the halves, yellows are the fourths, which is good because in the students' books, they have some of these pieces in their math books. And so this way, the circles they will now have will match the books in there. But I love the fact that they're solid. I love the fact that they're indestructible. I love the fact that everyone has a little Ziploc bag that can store them in. Right now, because they're brands making new, there's a little plastic circle holding them together. I didn't take the circle off. At first, I sincerely thought about it, but today is the first day we're going to use these. So I actually kind of want the circles together so the kids can physically count the pieces before we start the actual math lesson today. But I'm so happy. The kit comes with 15 complete sets, which is enough for like 30 students if you have them working with pairs. And then there's one more set in here that is the teacher set that is, um, the cl they're not clear, but they're transparent because, you know, these were designed with an overhead projector still in mind. I don't have an overhead projector anymore. So, but I'll just put down a piece of white paper so this way when I use my Elmo and my over or my projector, it'll match what the kids have. But I am so, so happy. If you want these, I'll be sure to link them in the description box below. But I have a feeling that these are going to be life changing. Just, oh, this is such a game changer. No more cutting paper fraction circles. Yay! Oh my God, I am so happy. Words cannot express. <laughs> um, also, I've had a couple of you guys ask me if I was going to change my room theme for next year. And I have to be honest, right now, I am thinking, no. 
I don't think I am going to change my room theme for next year. I am still 100% in love with my Harry Potter classroom. First of all, I spent a boatload of money on all of this. To put this room together, to buy my, you know, my sorting hat and my quotes, all the paper, um, the f uh, repurchasing some of the flags, because I couldn't find them all. I owned all these flags at one point, but for some reason when it was time to do this, the only one I could find was my Hogwarts flag. I couldn't find the house flag, so I had to reorder those. Uh, all of the decals, the cutouts, the frames. I'll be honest, I spent probably $300 assembling this room this year. Oh, I bought Sir Nicholas over there, my, my knight in shining armor. So, I don't think I'm going to redecorate my room because First of all, I'm not bored with it. Usually you would think by the end of the school year, you're just like, oh, I'm so sick of this. I'm so ready for something else. I'm not sick of it. I still love my Harry Potter classroom today as much as I did on the first day of school. The only reason I see would see myself changing this is if I changed grade levels. If they suddenly told me, oh, you're teaching first grade next year. Sorry, but yeah, that's just the way the numbers are. Well, maybe then I would change it just because first graders wouldn't have a clue who Harry Potter is. It's not quite in their wheelhouse, so to speak. But um, I've already talked to this year's third grade teachers and said, hey, can you do me a favor? In that last week of school, you know the one, the one where you throw on a movie a couple of times because we're trying to clean out the classrooms and shut things down. Can you do me a favor and show them the first Harry Potter movie? And the, both of the third grade teachers said, sure, we'll show Harry Potter. It's like, thank you. So this way next year's incoming fourth graders will know who Harry Potter is and why the room looks this way. Because if you remember, way back in September, my students walked in and they're like, oh, this is nice. What is it? <laughs> so next year's incoming class will definitely know what Harry Potter is and and why the room looks like this. But so, yeah, I'm not I'm not changing it. I still love my classroom, and I love it. Good morning, happy Wednesday. I did not record yesterday because it was Tuesday and it was our last trip to the DIA so all four trips to the DIA are done and I am glad <laughs> um, you know I enjoy going to the DIA personally I love it it's like one of my favorite places I love to go I love to take my time look around do things but doing it four weeks in a row is a bit much because when we come back it swaps our lunch period so by the time we get back we're going to the very last lunch they come back I have like 35 minutes to try to teach something they go to special they come back I have like 25 minutes to try to teach something and that's it the day is done I mean just done so for four Tuesdays in a row now I haven't really been able to teach anything and then Today is Wednesday, and we have another field trip. Oh my God. It's different, it's not the DIA, but we're, today we're going to the aquarium at Belle Isle, and I've now done this field trip three years in a row. It's boring. <laughs> it's informational, the kids will learn something, but honestly, for me, the teacher, this is such a boring field trip. I'm sorry. It's nothing against the aquarium. It's a lovely little aquarium. It really is. The architecture is fairly nice. It's an ancient build, not ancient, but it's an older building that they've restored. But I'm not a fish person. <laughs> I'm just not a fish person. But it's tied into the curriculum, and so we have to go every year. Third grade does the conservatory. Fourth grade does the aquarium. But for me, I mean, there's nowhere to sit. You have to stand the entire time. And so that just really irritates my foot and my knee because I'm 
old. Sorry, I am. I'm old. Um, or older. Okay, I'm not old, but you know what I mean. I'm not exactly a spring chicken anymore. So I actually just kind of find this trip exhausting. And then after we do the aquarium, we will have lunch in the conservatory, which the conservatory is beautiful, but it's also like a thousand <laughs> degrees in there. And I don't like heat. I'm not a heat kind of a person. Heat and me, we don't get along very well. So today is just kind of one of those days where you just got to grin and bear it. So plus, honestly, no teacher in their right mind would ever schedule two field trips two days in a row. Um, this was not in my control at all. These were dates that were dictated to me by administration, by the places themselves where they had open availability. So, yes, we will get through this day, people. We will get through this day. Also, another reason I am not looking forward to this day is my class is insane right now. Just absolutely insane. And part of that is spring fever. We've had some incredible 70 degree days here and they totally have spring fever. Part of it is also because the week before vacation, then a week of vacation, and now this week, every single bit of our structure and our routine has been chucked out the window. You know, the week of the week just before vacation, I was absent Monday. I was at the doctor. I was not well. I came Tuesday. We went to on a field trip. Wednesday morning, I was gone to a writing curriculum committee meeting, which takes up my entire AM. They had a sub. Then Thursday afternoon, I don't even remember why. No, Thursday was normal. Friday, I wasn't here because the fourth grade teachers had to go to a per professional development on the new science curriculum. So I only got to teach that week, Thursday and one afternoon, a day and a half of teaching by me in an entire week's period due to circumstances out of my control. Then we have a week vacation. Now I come back this week, I got to teach Monday. Tuesday, no teaching. Today, I'll get a little teaching in before the trip, but once we get back, there'll be no more teaching. It's, it's just done. Tomorrow, Thursday, I have another writing curriculum meeting that I have to go to, so that takes up my entire AM. I will get to teach tomorrow PM. Friday's Good Friday, no school. So in two weeks of school, I've taught a day and a half that week and this week. It's, it's insane. And because the schedule and the routine is insane, that insanity is being quickly adopted by the children. So next week when we come back, there are no field trips, nothing is planned. I am just going to buckle down the Monday when we come back after Easter, I will review our routines. I will spend that whole day acting as if it's literally the first day of school again. You know, how do we do this? How do we do this? What are the expectations for this? And then for the rest of the week, I am planning the most boring by the book week you have ever seen. So, because I need structure. I need routine. And they do too. So that is the goal for next week. And now that I've basically sat here and complained to you guys for a solid 10 minutes, <laughs> I'm going to stop now because I do have to get some things ready before this day starts today. But yeah, I'm just, <sighs> I've just sort of had it up to here. I, I yeah, it's, it's cray cray. <laughs> just so cray cray. We are currently on a bus on a field trip and our bus driver is seriously trying to kill us. <laughs>
The peppermint shrimp? Yes. Okay. Ten hungry piranhas. Actually, there's more than ten. But that's the book title. So the class is finishing up lunch right now. The field trip's wrapping up. And we have to have the same bus driver return us back to school. Wish us luck, people. Wish us luck. Seriously, they're laughing, but it's true. I even texted my principal. I go, you may need a new fourth and third grade teacher next year because this guy's going to kill us. Really, he's going to kill us. So, God willing, I will talk to you guys later. <laughs> the day is over. Thank God. God, because we got back and the kids were just wound up and the bus, I am not, I swear, I am not joking. That bus went airborne twice on the way to the field trip. Luckily, the drive back was a little better because the other teacher I was with basically looked at the bus driver like, dude, you've got to chill out because you're going to kill us. So... He did slow down for the drive home. It was not as bad. But yeah, we totally went, I've never, I didn't even know you could make a bus go airborne. We went airborne twice that trip. Granted, Detroit's got some big potholes in it, and, but yeah, whoa. So uh, tomorrow morning, the kids will have a sub. I already have my sub plans laid out for the sub for tomorrow. It's just the daily five lesson, you know, read aloud, read with partners, work on writing, and some math papers. I will be here after lunch tomorrow to wrap up the day and then we don't have school Friday for Good Friday. So I am going to go ahead and close out this vlog today because it's getting a little long and but it was interesting, I think. I hope. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed this teaching vlog, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from me in the future, click that subscribe button and I will talk to you later.